to say thank you. I'm gonna say God that He is so that He's He's faithful. Yes, He is. You know, yes. He will. Yes. He is. He answers all your prayers. Sometimes it's not the answer you expect mm -hmm. or that you want. That's right. But He answers, and I'm so grat grateful for that. I'm thankful that He. You know, every time I come to church, there's a message. There's something for me in every service. Amen. And I, I, I'm, like I said, he's just been a great God. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Someone help me out and quickly turn this on. <laughs> Blessed be the name of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. All right. I am excited to be here today. Amen. I am so thankful to be in the house of the Lord Thank this morning. You, God is great, and he is greatly to be praised. Blessed be the name of Jesus. There is no God like our God. And the, God has been so good over the last uh, couple of weeks. You know, when your mind has been bombarded and bombarded and bombarded, mm -hmm. the goodness of God, the exciting thing about God is God doesn't just leave you in the battle. He actually goes ahead of you. Amen. He's already handling business before you ever get there. And I love that about Jesus. Just during the last couple of weeks, he's just reminding me again and again. Even if I don't know what the answer is, I don't know the what where the path is taking us. I don't know all the answers, but I can trust his love and I can trust his character. Because he's good. I know that about him. He's good. So I can trust his goodness. I can trust his love and kindness. He's always been faithful. I can trust the history I have with him. And so out of all of that, I'm just excited because I'm just like, you know what? You know, we had a bit of a surprise this morning, bit of a little hiccup, but God is always in control, always in control. And so I am excited because he's just, there, there are no surprises for God. No surprises, and I'm grateful for that. I'm I'm excited about that. That our God is in control. Yes, He is. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just worship the Lord this morning. Heavenly Father, I want to say thank you. I want to give you the honor, the glory. I want to magnify you this morning. I want you to have your way, Jesus. Lord, be magnified, be praised in this house. Lord. You are the only living God. There is no other God like you. There is no other God beside you. You are mighty and glorious and worthy of every praise, every worship, every adoration. Lord, I love you. Have your way in this house this morning, Jesus. Glory to the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm so thankful for who Jesus is. Jesus. Um, go ahead, sweetie. And I'm just so thankful for his goodness. We're going to worship the Lord in song. We're going to sing, Victory, Victory Shall Be Mine. Amen. And oldie but goodie, because victory is always ours if we walk in the steps ordered by God. I don't care what it looks like, victory is yours. Amen. Victory is yours. Yes. God has promised us to overcome. Amen. Victory is already ours. Amen. Let's stand together and worship the Lord in song.
Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. How worthy you are, oh God. Blessed be your mighty name, Jesus. It is time to praise the Lord. It is time to give him the glory. Because we might say, I'll do it another day. Or, you know, I'm going to move and, and do this another day. And it doesn't happen. You know, there are many times, many regrets where I said, oh, I'll, I'll um, do this for this person at another time. But you know what? I wasn't able to. They didn't make it. They're not here anymore. And so I wasn't able to fulfill, you know, what I thought was going to happen. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. While we are able to, while we have this day, Amen. Yes. worship the Lord. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. Worship the Lord. Give him the glory he's worthy of. He's worthy of praise. It's not your situation that's worthy of praise. He is worthy of praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to continue to worship Jesus. Hallelujah. No, no, no. You have a problem. You have a problem. 
Amen. Praise God. So we're going to praise the living God. We're going to worship Jesus. We're going to give him the glory. We're going to magnify him. And we're going to just let God know, Jesus, we are yours. This is your house, your territory, this city. I don't care what's happening. It belongs to Jesus. He's already given victory. He's already given victory in your life. I don't care where things are going, what it seems like, what it looks like. Oh, there's an old preacher that used to remind us that there is one word that is not in God's vocabulary. And that is surprise. Right. <laughs> Brother Jeff Arnold, yeah. bishop out of Florida, Gainesville, Florida. And he, was, he would always say that. That's the one word that's not in God's vocabulary. Yes. Surprise. Amen. There is nothing that he's not aware of. Amen. Nothing. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Jesus. So all this morning, we came into a surprise. Amen. It wasn't a surprise for him. Right. Jesus handled it. Right? Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's magnify Jesus.
Jesus.
are going to continue to worship Jesus, preparing our hearts and minds, making ourselves ready to receive the seed of the word so that God can work. The word of God is a mighty, a mighty changer and transformer, able to, 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 to cut away things that, you know, by ourselves we can't. But the word of God is transformative and it's changing. It will change us from the inside out. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. To you be the glory. Pastor Chris, if you come. nationalities in this area. Amen. We've got Hispanic, we've got Turkish, we've got Indian, we've got uh, West Indian, we've got African, uh, we've got, of course, white people like me. <laughs> um, but God has a purpose to bring us all together. Amen. 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 Yes. I am so excited that even with our small congregation, we've got Thank different you. language groups, Thank different uh, cultural groups that come together to worship God. Amen. This is what it's going to be like in heaven. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's what it's going to be like in heaven. We're looking at each other. We are the family of God. Amen. Come out of all different walks of life, all different levels of education and and background and all of that to worship the Lord. Amen. We have one thing in common. We didn't have the same mom. But we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Isn't that exciting? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, I feel like a little bit like uh, the old country boy with a shotgun where you just kind of shoot it in the general direction and, and it just scatters everywhere. <laughs> um. But I want to I want to reiterate something that my wife said earlier about praise. And praise is an important weapon in your arsenal. Amen. Yes, it is. Okay. Praise is an important weapon against the enemy. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Gideon. I'm going to get to my sermon in just a second, but I need to say this. Gideon stood up with his men, 300 men against tens of thousands of people. And God instructed them to hold the pincher and hold the lamp underneath the pincher. And when the time came for Gideon to come against the Midianites, they were to break the pincher and shout aloud to the Lord, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. It was a praise to God. They were supposed to praise God. When the Israelites went into battle, they did not send the archers in front. Right. They did not send the uh, horsemen in front of, right. the, of the army so that they could soften up the enemy. They sent 
the priests of the Lord Amen. with the ark of God Amen. in the front of the yes. army yes. praising yes. God. Yes. That's right. They fought differently right. than any other country yes. that is yes. on earth. It's the truth. They praised God as yes. the first weapon of choice. Now, we don't fight physical battles. I hope none of you have been in a fight this week. <laughs> but we certainly fight a spiritual battle Amen. every day. And sometimes you need to realize that your weapon has to be praise. Your weapon has to be praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, that wasn't my sermon, but I wanted to remind you of that. Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. I'm going to read one verse of scripture while you're standing. If you don't mind standing, let's keep Reading of the word. Amen. Luke chapter 14 and verse 23. Luke chapter 14 and verse 23. Hallelujah. Welcome to all of our online guests. God bless you. Sister Lisa, if you're watching, God bless you. We love you. Aunt Diane, um, Aunt Virginia. <laughs> Um, I must have been thinking about her this week. My Aunt Diane passed uh, a couple of months ago, and uh, we miss her. She used to watch uh, faithfully. Uh, but Aunt Virginia, God bless you if you're watching. Uh, we miss Aunt Diane. She had such a laugh, man. She'd laugh, and you just, you just couldn't help but laugh when you heard her laugh. Uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 23. Hallelujah. I'm going to see you once again. Amen? Amen. I'm going to see my Aunt Diane. I'm going to see my grandma. I'm going to see my Uncle Tim. I'm going to see my Aunt Virginia, my father, all of those that, that we lost this last couple of years to COVID. I'm going to walk on streets of gold, and we're yes. going to see them one more. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Verse 23. Everybody there say amen. Amen. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. That my house may be filled. Thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you so much for your word, for the encouragement of your word. I worship you today, Jesus, and praise you. Everybody say in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Jesus name. Amen. I'm so excited to see all of you in the house tonight. I feel like we've just been uh, meeting and each other the last few weeks, but it's so great to see every one of you here. Um, God is so good. Sister Nicole, we love you. God bless you. Amen. You too, Cody. Amen. This is an interesting story. It's recorded both in Matthew and in Luke, and it starts in both sessions when one of them, they're all sitting down to eat together. And one of them says, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Verse 15, that's where it picks it up. And so Jesus responds back to them to talk to them about the kingdom of God. And he's talking about how things are going to go down in the kingdom of God. He says in verse 16, if we back up a little bit, you pardon me reading a little bit today. A certain man made a great supper and bade many and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, come, all things are now ready. 
And they all with one consent began to make excuse. I don't know how many of how many of us have made excuses about God. Amen. Amen. Well, I wish I could pray, but I wish I could do this, but I will do this tomorrow, but right? We make excuses. They all made excuses. The first said, I bought a piece of ground and I have to go and see it. I pray to have me excused. The other said, I bought five yoke of oxen. I need, need to go prove them. I pray to have me excused. Another said, I've married a wife and I cannot come. There's a joke in there somewhere, but I'm not going to it out. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. And then the master of the house being angry said to his servant, go quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. Wow. The master of the house intentionally went after the outcasts of society. The people that nobody wanted. The poor, the maimed, the blind, the halt. That means people that can't walk, that can't talk very well, that, that, that are blind, that, that are poor, that can't make ends meet for themselves. What a way to build a kingdom. This was Jesus' response to, to those saying, Blessed is he that sits down in the kingdom of God. He responds back to say that those people that are going to be part of it are not who you think they are. You think it's going to be all of the elite. You think that it's going to be the people that are the religious people of the society of today. But Jesus had an opposite message. He said, those people won't even be at the banquet. They won't even be at the table because they've got more important things on their mind. Wow. Man, I'm going to have to preach to myself here for a second. Lord, help me if I've got more important things on my mind than serving Christ. Lord, help me if I've got more important things on my mind than being faithful to what he has called me to do. And to be, Lord, help me if I've got more important things on my mind than faithfully serving and listening and dropping everything else to serve at what he has asked me to do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I, if I don't care if I'm in the middle of, of plowing with a yoke of oxen that's brand new and if I stop their training, they're going to lose all the training that I put my hard work into. If God calls me, to go and do something, I better answer and say yes. I don't care if I just got married and my newly married wife is coming and, and it's time to go to the wedding. What better date than a marriage as a newly married couple? You love going to marriages when you're a newly married couple. You're like all happy, oh, somebody's getting married. It's wonderful. But that was their excuse. I'm just married and I cannot come. Right. But I better be available when he calls. But this is the exciting part to me. He said, go and bring in the poor. Bring in those that can't do anything for themselves. Bring in those that are maimed or they, they really, they, don't, they are not able-bodied. To be able to live and do for themselves. Bring in the halt. That means those that can't walk very well. Bring in the blind. God intentionally brought in those that could not do for themselves. That it would be a blessing to to become a part of the kingdom of God. That it would make a difference in their life to become a part of the kingdom 
of God. God doesn't have any need of the power of this world uh, or, the, or the power structure of this world or the riches of this world. He is in the job of making relationships that matter to him. Hallelujah. I was so encouraged today by a discussion that Sister Jackie and I had this morning on the way to church. And she was just sharing about something the Lord had shared with her this week. And it was just so encouraging to me. I thought, wow, Lord, you took your time to speak to her exactly what she needed to hear. How much more will you also speak to me? The Bible says that he is no respecter of persons. That Elijah, the great prophet Elijah from the Old Testament, called down fire from heaven down to consume the sacrifice and show 450 prophets of Baal what was going on. That great prophet. The New Testament says that Elijah was just a man, just like we are. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor for a little bit. Look at them. They could be in another Elijah. Wow. <laughs> I can see how much you believe that right now. <laughs> But God gives the amount of authority and power to you to use exactly to the level that he wants you to. There was a lady that was approaching the temple box. That was the box that was set aside for offering. She comes up to the offering and everybody else was coming to the offering. They would make a big fanfare, dancing up to the offering plate. Wave their money around. They got buku amount of money. You know, they're just putting it right into the offering plate. And this little bitty old lady brings two pennies. And she puts them into the offering plate. And Jesus looks, says those two pennies are worth more in that offering plate than anything else that just got put in there. Why? God does not count things the way that we count them. We count them based on education and experience and money and things and, you know, uh, family connections and where you're at in the world. But he doesn't count them that way. He counts them in terms of obedience to him. That is how he counts our faithfulness towards him. Hallelujah. So he said, go into the into the lanes of the city and bring in the poor, the halt, the mind, the maimed, the blind. You know why God wasn't concerned about bringing the very lowest parts of society into his marriage hall? Because he knew they would come in blind, but they would walk out seeing. He knew when they came into that marriage celebration, they came in halt, that they would leave dancing. He knew when they came in lame, they would walk out whole. He knew they would come in broken, that they would leave out filled. He knew that they would come in a mess, but he would clean them up and send them out again. Hallelujah. He's not worried about what they look like. He's not worried about where they come from. He's able to do to the uttermost. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And Paul said it even better than I can. He said, and such were some of you. But now you are washed. Now you are justified. Now you are sanctified. In the name of the Lord Jesus. God can do it. He can do it. Praise God. Go out into the city. Find those that everybody else thinks is a cast off. 
I can make him something in my kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You see, God wants his glory to come out of your life and not your glory. It's not about your glory. It's not about you looking good. It's not about your reputation. It's not about who you are. It's about who he is. So then the servant comes back and says, Lord, we did exactly what you wanted. And there's still some more room here. That reminds me of an old song. It says there's room at the cross for you. There is room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there is room for one more. There is room at the cross for you. And so the Lord said to the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges. What type of people are out in the highways and the hedges? We're not talking about the poor and the lame and the blind and the halt now. We're talking about a different type of people that live out there. There's two types of people that live on the highways. The first type are those that are just traveling through. They're going from one place to another. They have a destination in mind and they are traveling through. How many of you are traveling through right now? You have a destination in mind, which is heaven, and you're just traveling through this life to get to heaven because that is our home. Our citizenship is not on earth, but it is in heaven. And we don't follow an earthly master, but we follow our master and father in heaven. They're travelers. And the second type, of people that live in the highways are those, unfortunately, that prey on the travelers. They're thieves and robbers. They're people that really, if we look at them from outside, really don't deserve to be at a wedding feast. Hide all your stuff because they're going to steal it when they get there. Boy, I'm preaching to somebody. Come on. Come on. In this, in this service, in this church, we're going to have people that come in that look like they shouldn't be here. Come on. That look like they're thieves. That look like they're robbers. That look like they, they don't belong in a church service. But let me tell you something. God has invited them to this place. And it's a place of restoration. Where the thief doesn't have to be a thief anymore. Where the robber doesn't have to rob anymore. Where he can become something that God has created for him to be. The thieves and the robbers are the second type of people that are out there. So they brought them. And then Jesus put this at the end of it. He said, For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. There are people that will be invited that will ignore the invitation and they will not sit down at the supper. Lord, I don't want to be one of those. God, I don't want to be one of those that heard your call and didn't listen. I don't want to be one of those that heard when you were saying, come closer to me. And I said, no, I have something better I need to do. Lord, forgive me for those times when I've heard you say, come and pray for a while. And I said, oh, I've got something else I need to get done before I do it. Lord, forgive me for those times when I've, 
I have not surrendered every part of my heart and my life, God. Forgive me for those times when I've seen the world and the things of the world and they took precedence over what you've done in my life. Jesus. Lord, help us. I pray that you pray those prayers sometimes. I pray you're praying them today. I hope you are. Now, the second rendition of this story is in Matthew chapter 22. It's the same story, it's just a different viewpoint. If you go to a, a court and you hear two testimonies of the same thing, you're going to hear two different viewpoints. That's what you see when you look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You also see stories that Jesus would tell over and over again, and so they record them here to teach us about what Jesus said. But I want to look at verse 11. Chapter 22, verse 11. Matthew, chapter 22, verse 11. Matthew, chapter 22, verse 11. Can you look at each other right now after you found it and say, you look good today. You look good today. Just that tone. Look out and say, you look good today. Now, don't flirt. That's not what we're talking about. Here. If you're married, you can flirt. Twenty-two, verse eleven. <clears throat> Jesus is speaking. Now, there's a lot in this story. I can't unpack it today. Go read the rest of Matthew's version of this. This is pretty amazing. But I want to read what happens in verse eleven. In Luke, he just calls him a certain man. There's a master. But in Matthew, he calls him king. And so he said, when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, friend, how did you come in not having a wedding garment? And this man had nothing to say. The Bible says he was speechless. That meant he was struck speechless. He didn't have a thing he could say back. He was caught. Verse 13. The king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away. And cast him out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. What does this little part of the story mean? The first thing that it means was that as people were coming into the wedding feast, someone was there to hand them a robe to be part of the wedding feast. Someone was standing there to give them the proper clothes. Remember, people are coming in from the highways, from the byways, from the city. They're coming in from everywhere all at once. The king had to provide a way for them to sit down with wedding clothes on. So everybody got a set of clothes for them to sit down at the wedding feast. I want you to look at each other again and say, you look good today. You look good today. <laughs> Why? When we are sitting at the wedding table, we are not clothed in our own righteousness. 
We are not clothed in our own abilities. We are not clothed with our own provisions. But the king has provided clothes for you to wear. Well, what kind of clothes do we get when we come into the kingdom of God? Hallelujah. I'm excited to tell you this. He replaces beauty for ashes. That means when you have ashes of mourning that you have put on yourself and, and tore your clothes because you've been through something horrific, he will make beauty come out of those ashes. He replaces joy for sorrow. He gives us garments of praise to wear before him. I'm not talking about physical clothes today. I'm talking about your spiritual clothes. You don't walk into the kingdom of God with your own spiritual clothes on. But we've got to put on the name of Jesus Christ and his righteousness. We've got to put on the blood of Christ when we are baptized into Christ. We are one of his. And then we walk to in a new life. We don't wear our own spiritual clothes. He clothes us. So what this story was saying was somebody tried to walk into the wedding party and tried to do it in a way that the king had not instructed before. Tried to do it in a way that the king hadn't provided for. And he sat there with his own clothes on because he thought he was better than the provisions of the king. He thought he was better than everybody else. And so he kept his own clothes on. But the kingdom of God... You cannot have your own provisions provided for you. You've got to completely surrender to the provisions of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. That's so exciting to me. Amen. That it's not about my own ability to provide. It's about his ability to keep. It's not about my own ability to make my clothes look great. It's about his clothing upon me. Praise God. Now those people that were part of the wedding party, the poor, the maimed, the blind, the halt, they didn't have anything better to put on themselves. And so when the king put his clothes upon them, they immediately looked at themselves and realized they needed him. Amen. 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 When we come to God, we must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Because he's the one that is providing for us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God. I don't depend on just some man to provide for me. I don't depend on a paycheck to provide for me. I don't depend on a house to be my provision. I don't depend on my car to be a provision for me. But Lord, your words are life. And your direction is the surety of my soul. And I must have you at any cost. The Bible calls God Jehovah Jireh, my provider. But even more than that, he is Jehovah our salvation, which is what the name of Jesus literally means. Jesus means Jehovah has become my salvation. When you say Jesus you're saying the almighty God of the Old and New Testament has become my salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Everything 
is in him. In Colossians, we learn that all of the fullness of the Godhead dwells in him bodily because we are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Mm. That just reminds us again. Look at your neighbor and say, you look good today. I don't care if you got your clothes out of the, the, the bin at the thrift shop or at Walmart or at Macy's or handmade by the best uh, tailor that's around. You look good because God is the one that's providing for you. God is the one that's helping you. God is the one that clothes you. Can you stand with me? Closing. His house will be filled. God has promised my wife and I not just multiple nations, but multiple revivals that are going to come out of this church. And he's going to use us. Everybody look around. It's us. us. We are the ones that are going to make that happen. I hope we are. Amen. God wants to use you to bring his kingdom about. It cannot be just our family. We can only reach a few people, our own selves. Can you imagine if every one of us went and talked to somebody and God immediately transformed their life? Look how quickly God can do a work. Amen. Amen. Look at each other and say, you look good today. You look, you look good, good today. today. Amen. <laughs> Lord, you're so good. We're going to take a time of prayer right now. Those that join online, God bless you. We love you. So excited you joined us today. We're going to spend some just a few minutes praying, allowing God to move in this house. Hallelujah. Even despite all the distractions that happened this morning, God was here during this prayer service that we had at 10 o'clock. Amen. And God has been here in this uh, in this meeting today. Amen. So I am excited about what he's going to do in just the next few minutes. If we open up our hearts and our minds to him and allow him to come and just uh, change us and put his spirit on us.